All right, so to start off, um, this is the case I went with. This is the Montec X3 mesh. I got it on Amazon. Um, it's a relatively budget case, and that's initially why I bought it. At the time, it was on sale for $50, and I figured, man, that's cheap for a case, you know, with the, the features that this case has. My really only complaint about it is the case metal is a little flimsy, but I think it's going to be just fine. What I did run into, however, which makes me regret getting it a little bit, is I realized after I purchased it that the case fans are standard RGB. They're not addressable, and I really wanted addressable. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to be tackling today is replacing the fans on it for some addressable RGB fans which all said and done added about just under another $100 to the build, so I could have gotten a much better case for this money. But it is what it is. I already had the case, um, and we're gonna go ahead and throw some, uh, some fancier fans in there. All right, so one thing I've already gone ahead and done, uh, this was done a while ago, is this case has three 120 millimeter fans. Um, I've already gone ahead and replaced these uh, for the upgraded ones that I wanted to put in. And what I use for those are these Cooler Master Master Fan MF120 Halos. Um, the 120 millimeters uh, you can get here in this kit. Uh, they come with a controller um, as well as some wiring so you can hook them all in line. We're going to be doing something a little bit different. So we're not actually using uh, most of what came with this kit. Um, and we'll look at that in just a few minutes. But the three... Uh, front fans on this case are 140 millimeters um, So I went with the same fan uh, still the cooler master master fans. They're just the 140 halos um, These you can't get in the um, Three fan kits you have to buy them individually um, Which is why we're going to go with a hub to connect all six fans together But first let's go ahead and get these new fans installed All right, guys, let's go ahead and talk about this, um, how we're going to use for our six fans here. Uh, this is the Master Fan ARGB um, hub. It connects all of your ARGB connections as well as all of your PWM connections into one. Um, you can use the 301 connectors uh, that come with the fans. Either if you buy them in a kit, they'll come with the fans, or you can buy them separately. And then daisy chain all the ARGB together. Um, I wanted more of a sleek setup and something that could handle everything all hooked to one so we just have to go to a couple different headers on the motherboard instead of several. Um, so what's neat about this is it actually receives SATA power um, from either the motherboard or from your uh, PSU and then it just has your two outputs so you just go to one motherboard PWM output and one motherboard ARGB output and it keeps everything uh, nice and clean. Let's go ahead and get this installed. Alright, so what's cool about this guys is it actually has two magnetic strips on the back, which means you can place it really anywhere you want to um, for cable management and keeping things nice and neat. I'm not sure, I'd like to put it somewhere in here, but I'm not sure how many of these openings I'm going to need for cable management right now. Um, so I think I'm just going to utilize one of these hard drive spots here it'll fit on there uh, nice it looks nice there um, and if I have to move it later on uh, I will all right so all that leaves us now is to go around and get everything hooked up to the hub here 
One thing to uh, keep in mind if you're going to go ahead and use uh, this hub is apparently Cooler Master uses a relatively proprietary ARGB connector. Um, if you're using a non-Cooler Master fan, you're going to have to trim off the outside layer a little bit um, in order to get it to fit here into the hub. Uh, let's go around and we'll get all our fans hooked up. So I went ahead and threw on the uh, ARGB and the PWM cabling here. And you can see there's a pretty big mess. Um, I think off camera I'm gonna come through and just tidy these up a little bit. Um, I actually don't have any zip ties down here in the basement workshop yet. Um, so that I'll do off camera is just clean up this uh, fan wiring, uh, get that tucked up uh, so that it's not gonna be connected in with any of the other wiring because uh, it is very messy right now. But let's go ahead and move on to the one other thing we're going to be tackling today. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the PSU that I'm going with. Um, also probably a good time just to explain um, exactly what this build's all about. Like I said, it's, it's mainly because I needed a better computer for editing content for the channel. Um, but it's also meant to be more of a budget build with future upgradability. That's why I'm going with a PC this time rather than a laptop. PSU, honestly, for this, I went a bit overkill, uh, but I don't know exactly what I may want to do up the road with this computer. Um, so we went with the EVGA uh, Supernova G3 here. Um, it's in a 650 watt. This initial setup I'm going with is going to come nowhere near 650 watts. Um, Mainly I got a pretty decent price on this and it will allow me to have that insurance down the road um, of being capable um, of some better options. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this unboxed and get it put in the, uh, the case. One thing I also didn't mention, um, one thing I really wanted, probably didn't necessarily need outright, uh, but I really wanted a fully modular PSU. Um, just because I am very OCD when it comes to things like wiring and, and aesthetics, and I just wanted to be sure that I could get the cleanest install possible. Alright guys, so like I said, I'm not going to bore you with the wire management. I'm going to go ahead and clean up those fan wires off camera. But as long as I've got the part here, I figure we'll go ahead and talk motherboard. Um, so I'm going to be going with the MSI um, B550 Tomahawk. 
Um, originally, I'd gone with the B450 Tomahawk, um, and I actually returned it uh, due to the fact that I'd be going with the 5600 series uh, Reason 5 chip. Um, my understanding is you can make the B450 compatible with the 5000 series CPUs, uh, but it requires, um, at least what I could, the research I had found had said, it requires some fancy uh, BIOS flashing and things like that. And this is my first sort of entry into PC building. It seemed like maybe it was a little overcomplicated for what I was going to be able to do. Um, so I actually returned that and we're going to go with the uh, 550 here because it's all set up and ready to go with the 5000 series um, CPUs. So the rest of the parts for this build are on the way. So we're going to go ahead and hold off uh, before diving into this, waiting on um, obviously the CPU, the RAM, all that good stuff. That's on the way and we'll get to that. So next time you tune in, uh, we'll have the fan wires all cleaned up in the case, ready to go with that. And we'll have the rest of our parts here and we can go ahead and hopefully in one shoot, finish up this build and uh, power on the PC. All right guys, so like always, be sure to hit that like button. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you like my content and feel free to leave a comment below.